Hey, hey, this is Jesse Rodriguez Melendez. Welcome to this week's All Bases Covered. We have a super exciting show tonight. Um, tonight, we're going to be welcoming two very uh, cool guests. And um, joining me first tonight is going to be Josh Wentz. Um, he was recently interviewed by Gary V. And he's going to be talking to us a little bit tonight about a program that he's put together. Um, and then right afterwards, we have a special surprise guest right at around 7.15. Um, I will announce who that's going to be right after um, we have um, Josh finish up with us. So let me go ahead and let's bring Josh into the broadcast so that he can introduce himself and tell us a little bit more about what he's doing. Hey, Josh. Hey, how's welcome. It going? So nice Thank to you. have Thanks you here with us here. tonight. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm super I, I excited. Appreciate the invite. Yeah, so I'm going to have you formally introduce yourself. Tell us a okay. little bit, of, you know, a little bit more about you. You were recently um, interviewed by Gary V, and I caught some of it and got yeah. really intrigued by what you were talking about because obviously we're in the sports world, and yeah. any time that I hear about you know, muscles and joints and all that stuff. I'm always interested and yeah. particularly about what you were talking about, because I know that athletes suffer so much with injuries and pain mm -hmm. um, that what you were talking about really struck me. So go ahead, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your program. Yeah, uh, my name is Josh Wentz. I am from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I um, played baseball ever since I was a little kid and about junior year of high school, I got um, some pretty bad shoulder pain uh, to the point where I was taking four or five ibuprofen before every baseball game, which is not really what you want to be doing. Um, and so I tried chiropractors, sports chiropractors, um, massage therapists, uh, PTs, and really nothing was kind of making anything better. It, just little increments better, um, but still was taking four or five ibuprofen before each game. Um, eventually I got recommended I go see a guy that does body work um, and I went and gave him a shot and I think three three or four sessions in I was off ibuprofen um, I was back playing uh, still a little bit of pain still but not to the point where I was needing to take ibuprofen and so um, that's really where I kind of first fell in love with um, f solving problems and fixing issues with the with the body specifically um, and so went to college at Bethel University up here in Minneapolis and uh, studied athletic training. Um, so I'm a licensed athletic trainer and have then trained with the body work back in 2017. Um, so I've been doing this for a little over th almost three and a half years now. So. so talk to us a little bit about the process, because I know that you shared that okay. you put together a program. Um, talk to us about the process and what is it exactly um, that this would help someone that's in pain? Like, what would it help relieve and how would they achieve, you know, some comfort using what you what you teach? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of musculoskeletal injuries, so ankle sprains, um, tearing of ACL, MCL, those are all those are all what we call musculoskeletal injuries. So it, have, it has to deal with your either bones, muscles, ligaments, tendons. Um, and so really any injury to that is usually because of two reasons. Um, either one is uh, an actual injury. So someone is causing an injury to you. Um, slide tackling, for instance, or getting tackled in football and you get a concussion. Someone's causing that to happen. Um, or broke like broken ankle really anything that someone else is causing to happen on you and then there's also the ones that from internal so those are the ones where people are a football player is running down the field and makes a cut in the grass and that one time is when he twists his ankle mm. no one touched him or anything so there's two differences and there's ones that we can't prevent and one that's ones that we can and so i'm really focusing on why the answer of why are those injuries happening and i'm trying to solve that while solving everything else as i get to that so not only working on the muscles and ligaments and tendons but then also at the same time working to figure out why is this injury happening because most of the time when people call it a freak accident that's years and years of build up to that freak accident of 
either poor posture or diet or mental health or the sleep that that athlete has been getting. So um, I really work at getting to that instead of just the symptoms that we're dealing with of, hey, I have shoulder pain. Here's a stretch. Here's a workout that you can do. But I'm, I'm getting that. And why is it actually happening in the first place? So and I think I remember when you um, were sharing some of the the um, your your tips or technique. Yeah. Um, you, you were talking about soft tissue management, right? And how mm. someone can actually do that on themselves, correct? Yeah. So, so for, what's, for the most part, yes. And so, what what would be a tip or a technique that, let's say, if an athlete is experiencing some pain, or what's mm. something that they might be able to do? Um, quickly to help relieve some of that. I mean, that's really going to obviously depend on where it's at, whether it's mm -hmm. the elbow, shoulder, right. hip, low back. What, I mean, it's really going to depend, but obviously baseball players are going to have arm issues. And whether right. that's stemming from the elbow or the shoulder, that's really going to come down to shoulder posture. And so whether that's shoulder, if I'm rolled forward all day long, okay, and I'm going now to come back with a throw and then throw all the way through, okay, these muscles back here have been stretched all day long because you're rolled forward. And so then what happens when we stretch them and then keep coming, they're weakened because we've been stretching them all day long and now they can't stop us as well. So when our arms coming through, that momentum can't stop as well because of these muscles in the back have been overstretched all day long. Not necessarily that they're not strong enough, um, but a lot of it is because of posture wise, we're rolled forward and then that is putting constant tension on all these muscles back here. So, so I mean, that, that, that then stems to anything. I mean, you can have pain here. You can get an impingement because you're rolled forward. Your pec is going to be tight. So maybe coming back here hurts and now it's in the front of the shoulder. So there's really different areas through that motion where, but it's all comes back to no matter, not, not always, but no matter what it comes back to for the most part, it's going to be, Hey, where's that shoulder posture at during that throw or throughout the whole day as well. So, so I know sometimes I've heard other people say there's, there are certain tools that you can use. Is there something specific yeah. that you suggest? Yeah. So, um, tennis balls, Baseballs, lacrosse balls work super well for um, mm -hmm. rolling out your actual shoulder. I know a lot of people are go foam roller, foam roller, foam roller. Mm -hmm. I really only use the foam roller for my lower body. Um, I'm using a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball or a baseball, whichever, whichever I have laying around. And I roll my back. I roll up and down my low back. I roll my mid back. I roll my shoulders. Um, I can flip over onto my chest and roll my chest out. And it's very, it's very pinpoint versus the foam roller, which is your full body length. Um, and you're, you're hitting one spot, but not, not specifically as like a tennis ball. And then people are always like, would a, would a golf ball work? That's a little too specific um, mm. of a area. And it's not a going to feel very good and B mm. it's not going to do very much. It's not a, quite a big enough um, thing. And then like basketball is obviously soccer ball is too big and they're not firm enough. So, so it's got to be so it's got to be a certain texture. The ball has to be not necessarily the texture. Yeah, but it needs to be firm enough so you can lay on it and it doesn't just gotcha. flatten. Okay. And then B the tennis ball is going to be the softest, obviously, of those three. Then lacrosse ball, then baseball. Um, so it really A depends on what you have laying around the house. If you don't want to go buy something, or um, B kind of at which level of. So I would start with the tennis ball you'll be surprised at how painful it is so uh, and then, yeah I can, yeah I can imagine oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and um, then the, the importance is to sit on those areas that are really bothering you and take some nice deep breaths like four or five deep breaths and then move on to a new area so so could you like quickly just show us like what that would look like so like if someone had pain like in their arm what mm -hmm. what would be the movement that they would do uh, I mean, that's obviously going to depend, um, but I would start with rolling out your your shoulder here. And so you okay. have your your subs, um, your infraspinatus, which is actually below this ridge here. Okay. And then you have your supraspinatus. So these are going to be good spots to roll and then down into your shoulder blade and actually in between your shoulders as well. So, so just you... put that ball literally on the ground 
and you're laying down ah, on that ball just like a foam roller. Got it. So you're using it just like a foam roller. Yeah, yeah, my bad. If I didn't explain that well before. Got it, using got it. Just like a foam roller. Yeah. That is awesome. So yeah, now so I, I know that you, you've you actually come up with an actual program for this. Yep. Right? Head and, to toe. You, yep. You launched it. Yeah. Uh, this last Saturday. So about a, awesome. half a week ago. Congra yeah. Congratulations. I appreciate that. Um, and so how would someone, if someone's interested in you, you utilizing your program or getting in contact with you, what would be the best way for them to reach out to you or find you? Um, either in, Instagram is probably going to be uh, the best or um, like Twitter, Facebook works as well too. What's, um, what are some of your handles, Josh? Uh, at Josh Wentz for Instagram. Let me grab a charger real quick. My yep. Um, at Josh Wentz for Instagram uh, and Twitter as well. And then Facebook, you can find me there. Uh, you should probably just go to my business page, which is The Wellness Habit. Um, spelled exactly how it sounds. And then. And that's, and that's yeah. Wentz, W I N T Z, yes. correct? Correct. Yep, Wintz, W I N T Z. So Josh, at Josh Wintz, W I N T Z. Um, and there's going to be a link. Uh, you can also go to the wellnesshabit.co. Um, that will bring you to it as well. And then there's a link in my Instagram bio that will bring you to the membership. So. And so obviously, we all know this craziness that's going on, Josh, in our world right now. Um, yes. And they're talking about the potential of us not having sports at all for the rest of the season. Maybe, uh, definitely, it's looking like that for us in New York. I think you're out west, right? Uh, Midwest, Min Midwest, Minnesota. Yep. Minnesota. Okay. Wh what are you hearing in your area? Um, that's. Uh, I don't think we'll have a baseball spring season. Okay. I think that's. I think that's well out of the question unless something drastically changes. And we'll we might get a shortened summer season. We'll see. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's for me. We you know we work with the youth, and and Tony's been doing baseball mm -hmm. his whole life. And I think the saddest thing for me and for many of us watching what's going on is to just look at the seniors, right? Can you yeah. think back to your senior year and yeah, imagine I've, not I've, being able to play or I've you know finishing off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's I've definitely really thought sad. of that the last month or so and graduation mm -hmm. and prom and I know it's not easy and you'll look back on it and probably be a little bummed about it but I I think they're going to be doing some cool stuff for them or at least trying to yeah so. I, I I really hope so um but you know what Josh yeah, I know yeah, I, I, yeah I'm curious to know because you said you were a baseball player what was your favorite yep. team growing up? I uh, the Twins, unfortunately. <laughs> I grew up. I grew up. I mean, I grew up watching. I grew up watching Torrey Hunter, and uh, uh, that's I instantly fell in love with playing the outfield. That's um, what I was always drawn to, and yeah. Yeah, I, 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 um, I. As soon as I heard you say that the other day, too, I, I looked at you and I was like, man, he looks like a baseball player. You know, like like I try to, especially to with the beard right now too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a this is a October playoff beard right here. <laughs> yeah, for this sure. This is the the Corona beard. <laughs> well, yeah. well, let's hope and pray that we actually end up having some kind of sports to keep yeah. us entertained the rest of this year. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you Thank so you, much yes. for sharing your wisdom. Um, and definitely, again, this is Josh Wintz. Um, if you want to look him up, go ahead and find him. He's on um, on uh, Facebook and on Instagram and um, the wellness habit, correct? Correct. Correct. All right. Awesome. And I, I think I shared with you, we have a surprise guest coming on. Yeah, I'm um, excited to, <laughs> for everyone to know who it is. Yeah. And he, he, he didn't play for the twins. Um, but I think that he's, uh, which means he might've gotten a ring or two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but again, thank you so much. I so appreciate having you on with me here tonight. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And, for having me. and I look forward to having you again sometime in the future. We'll yeah, continue sure. dialogue. Awesome. All righty. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. 
All righty. So joining me now in a second is a man that probably really doesn't need much introduction. Um, he is he's known as the doc. Um, I'm probably giving it giving it away already by just mentioning that Dr. K is with us in the house. I'm super excited to welcome him. Um, and without further ado, let's bring him on. Dwight Gooden, how hey, are hey, you, just, man? Doing am, good. good to see you. It's been a while. How's everything? It's Everything's been great, Dwight. How are you? Let's start off by asking, how's the family? How are the kids and the grandkids? How's everyone holding up? Oh, man, everybody's doing well. I'm probably the one that's going through it. The board is one because there's no sports. That's my whole life. But uh, uh, it's great to I, have time. You know, my kids, I have a son, 15-year-old in Maryland, that plays high school basketball and football. Unfortunately, he hates baseball. Wow. So I spend, a, I spend a lot of time with him. And I FaceTime my grandkids down in Tampa. I have six grandkids now. So I'm, I'm yeah. missing them, but at least I get to FaceTime them. And I have two sons that live with me. So um, just here spending time, trying to stay safe, doing what we can to just get through this thing. Hopefully everybody else is safe and healthy at your house as well. Yeah, thank God. You know what's white? Everyone's well. Tony sends his love. You know yeah. how much she appreciates you. Oh, tell me say hello. She's a good man. Um, and so, you know, if you were currently playing, I know you and I, you know, we, we touched base a little earlier, but if you were currently playing and the MLB called you up and said, hey, we are going to have a season, how would you feel about playing? Me personally, I would love it because when I talk to kids and even the major league players now and the young guys who are just coming late, they got to look at that as a privilege because you know how many kids and guys trying to live their dream to play professional baseball? Not too many get to do it. So you always got to look at it as a privilege. It doesn't matter if you have one year in the league or 10 years in the league. So if they came to me and say, hey, we're trying to play the league, I'll be excited. Not just for myself to get back out there and play because I love the game, but I think it's a good time to help men, you know, the fans and everyone they're going through. Sports really does that for people. Um, I heard that a lot when I was playing, and now I get to see that a lot. How sports take the place of a lot of different things, whatever you may be going through at home, just having something to interrupt whatever you're going through at that time, whether it's an hour or two hours, makes a big difference. Yeah, and I just want to quickly say, if anyone's joining us, um, feel free, say hello to Dwight. He's here with us tonight. I call you Dwight. I like yeah, to Dwight call you by the name. I like to call you by the name that your mama gave you, I say. <laughs> and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Um, and, and it's so weird because like in Tampa, where I'm from, they call me Dwight. My oldest son is Dwight Jr., but they call him Doc. But unfortunately, in New York and New Jersey, I'm known as Doc. But Dwight's fine. I love Dwight. Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've actually touched base with Junior a couple of times. He's reached out to Tony. They were going to meet one time in Tampa. And then, of course, you know, everybody's schedule gets so crazy all the time. Yes. Um, but he's delightful, Dwight. Oh, he's, yeah. He's such a nice young man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so what are you hearing from other players? I know you stay in contact with everybody. What are you hearing from the guys? Are they itching to play? Do they want to get out there and play? Oh, big time. The guys are definitely ready to get out there. Um, I know like Peter Alonzo, he's been on MLB a couple of times talking. I know him a little bit because he's from Tampa as well. And these young guys who got a taste last year, they already got there. And I had the privilege to go down to spring training this year in Port St. Lucie, spend some time with the Mets and see those guys. And they all felt like this year is something special. Um, unfortunately, Syndergaard got hurt, but they have, you know, Michael Walker, they have uh, Priscilla, those guys, great pickups to come in. So I know they're interested to get back there to play, but like they all say, though, that the main thing is everybody's health. Everybody being, you know, safe and everybody's being okay. Um, that's the main thing, but obviously they're missing the game because this is something that those kids and when I play, we've done our whole life since we were seven years old, and we look forward to it. And you miss the connection that you have with the fans as well. Absolutely. And, you know, for us that we're in the baseball world, it seems so weird for us. Like we're like everything seems off now because we don't have baseball in our life. It's just so weird. Um, so you and I had a chance one time. We got to talking and I asked you a really interesting question. And I want to see if you have the same or similar answer. OK. All right. I asked you, what would Dwight Gooden say to Doc Gooden? Well, I think the main thing would say from, from a baseball standpoint was enjoy your career, respect the game, never forget your fans, never forget how you got to that point, um, enjoy every moment. Um, off the field, I would probably say if anything is going on inside, ask for help, be honest with yourself, 
be honest with your true feelings and never cheat your teammates or never cheat the next door neighbor. And what I mean by that, try to treat everybody the same with respect. It doesn't matter if you're the president or you're homeless. We're all brothers and sisters. Amen. So that would be my message. I love that answer, Dwight. One of the things I've always admired about you um, is your honesty and your transparency. I, I've always appreciated that about you. I, I always tell everyone, I remember the day that we first, first met you. We were we were with our campers in um, Yankee Stadium because every year we would take our campers to Yankee Stadium for the tour. And we were walking into the Hard Rock Cafe and you were walking out. And I, I remember seeing you walk by and I said, oh, I said to Tony, I said, oh my God, that's Dwight Gooden. And you were just so warm and caring. You spent about 20 minutes with all of our kids. You signed every kid's you know, t-shirt and I get, you know, gave tips to the kids. I still have pictures. Um, yes. I remember that, that day. What, what do you want people to remember about you, Dwight? I think the main thing is that I'm genuine. Obviously, I look at everybody like, Obviously, we have different jobs. We have different, you know, careers. But we're all we're all the same. We all come from the same maker. Um, and I was raised that way by my parents. I had great parents. Obviously, I made some wrong choice, but great parents. I would say the main thing is, like you mentioned, I try to turn the mistakes that I made into messages. Hopefully, the young people or anyone that's still like struggling with drugs, alcohol, will have to make the same mistakes that I make. I'm comfortable talking about that um, because that's not the life I'm living today. Um, obviously, the disease of drugs and alcohol, it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter your race, doesn't matter your rich or poor, you know, it, it affect you and not only you, but your home. So I can remember as a guy that obviously was great on the baseball field, but was really caring about people. More importantly, um, obviously, I love baseball. That was my thing. But I still feel that I'm still here for a reason. I just, you know, caring for others and let them know that you make a mistake is what you do with that mistake. How do you turn that around and get back up to better yourself and help others? And that's what it's all about. And my mom always taught me the other thing I want to say is that. What good is having a life if you can't have an impact on another's life? Um, for a long time, I didn't know what that means, but now I totally get it. And so, so what have you been doing, Dwight, in the last year or so to to sort of bring that message to light for yourself? Okay. Yeah, the main thing I had to get myself back on track. Um, I fell off the wagon. I had a um, relapse last year, last summer. Um, I went to this mental health institution called High Focus. I was there for eighteen weeks, um, just to get back on track and. Before I could help anybody else or be there for my kids, I had to take care of myself first. Uh, once I got myself in order, it's a day-to-day -day thing. I'm able to just carry that message. Um, before this virus thing started, going to schools, speaking at schools, speaking at rehab centers, and just kind of just carrying a message. Um, I love doing speaking at schools, especially because kids, that's my true passion. I love kids because I was a kid at one time, and I understand the distractions they have now. I think today's kids have probably more distractions than we have growing up, you know, with the video games, the cell phones, all the social media and all these different things and the peer pressure they have. So just kind of sharing the message with them, letting them know that, you know, it's, it's cool hanging with a group of guys that have some of the same goals you have. Um, you don't have to hang out with the guys in the street corner that doesn't have the same goals you have. And, and the main thing is having someone you can talk to, whether it's a parent, brother, sister, teacher, counselor, whoever that you feel comfortable with. And you know they're not going to judge you. And you can share what's really going on inside. That's that's truly my message. What I try to share with guys because I struggled with that a long time. Worry about if I say something to this guy, how's he going to judge me? How they going to look at me? But the main thing is finding someone that you're comfortable with and you're okay with talking to that person and knowing they're going to be there and whatever you talk about is going to stay right there. And I'm going to tell you, I think that's one of the reasons why, Dwight. I've always, um, I've always had a heart, you know, for for folks that have struggled this way. My dad was an addict. Um, I've had siblings who have been addicts. Um, uh, we've had, you know, we've unfortunately have lost some people in our family who were very addicted. And so whenever I hear someone like yourself share their message, um, I'm always inclined to, you know, feel, be compassionate right. And show compassion. Um, and so the fact that you're so honest about it, you know, you're, you're, your test will be your testimony. Mm. That's what I always say. Yes. Um, and so the fact that you're always willing to do that is is always something that I cherish um, and Thank that you. and that I always applaud you for. Thank you. I appreciate um, it. So I'm going to show you something, uh -huh. um, and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna actually um, 
uh, someone sent me, I think I shared with you earlier, a fan of yours. They're huge fans. Okay. They have a baseball facility in Texas and he had something that he drew for you when he was in wow. high school. Wow. I'm going to share that with you in a minute, but let me share this first. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to, then we're going to talk a little bit about this. Okay. So tell me if this is something that you could, are you seeing my screen? Um, I see you. Um, All right, hold on. Okay. Give me a second. Hold on. Yeah, take your time. All right. Can you see this? Are you seeing my screen? Okay. Uh, was there a special guest? No, hold on. No? Okay. Give me a second. I'm trying to show you. All right, let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Let me see. If, how about now? Are you seeing it? Yes. Okay, cool. The highlights, right? Yep. Okay. Those are great memories. Yep. You know, pitchers love to hit. That might be my favorite right there. <laughs> How, how many memories did that bring back for you? Oh, man, lot, so many memories. And the thing about it, when you're playing and you're going through all this, you know it's special and you're having great moments, like the no-hitter, um, breaking the strikeout record, winning these awards, um, the fans giving you all the energy that you can possibly handle at Shea Stadium. And you're not really able to enjoy it as much as you went through. But now that I'm retired, every single time I watch the highlights like that, it brings back great memories. And you just have flashbacks of all the wonderful times at City Field, I'm sorry, at Shea Stadium and Yankee Stadium. Um, I'm from my at heart, but playing with the Yankees was uh, just as important because it still was New York. And I love the opportunity I got to play in Yankee Stadium as well. And so many great moments, but the fans played a huge part of my career. Huge part. I have to tell you, I have goosebumps, Dwight. Like, I'm like, it's so electrifying to watch you. Is there any one of your accolades that's more important to you than the other? Oh, wow. Great question. Um, they all were so special because just a little kid coming from the inner city from Tampa, just trying to live a dream and just play major league baseball and stay healthy and play a long time. And I was fortunate enough to have 
so many different accolades happen, but if I had to pick one personal one, I would probably say the no hitter at Yankee Stadium, only because of all the significance that was around it. My dad was my hero growing up, um, great family man, and he taught me the game of baseball. And our time was watching the games on Saturdays back then. And he would be testing me about, you know, what did you throw here? How did you throw that? How would you set this guy up? And then the night before he was getting ready to have open heart surgery, um, I was supposed to go home the next day to be with him because if his health was bad. He had been on dialysis for 15 years. Mm-hmm. And because of his heart, they didn't think he will make it through the surgery. But I just thought that he would probably want me to pitch. And Joe Torrey, who was the manager at the time, I called him, told him I was coming in to pitch. He said, no, go home, be with your father, take as much time you need. I said, no, I'll see you tonight. And then I called my mom. And I kind of felt guilty with my mom because she felt like I should be there with my family, my sister and brothers, my dad. want to see me, but I said, no, I'll see you tomorrow. I need to pitch. And then it turned out that night would be a no-hitter. And not just a no-hitter, but doing it at Yankee Stadium where you've had all these different guys to play their you know, rules, the man, and all these guys. And you think about the year before I was out of baseball, um, earlier that season, I started off 0-3. I was put in a bullpen. And here I am now on the center stage throwing a no-hitter the day before my dad's going to have, getting ready to have the biggest day of his life to, the, for the surgery and pitch the no-hitter against Seattle, who at that time had the best hitting team in baseball. And the next day, going home, my dad had the surgery. He was on life support. We gave him that ball. Mm. And um, he ended up passing away, but that turned out to be the last game he saw me pitch at no-hitter. So from a personal standpoint, I would say that probably was my favorite moment all the time. I, I love that. That's an amazing story, Dwight. Yes, and that would always stick with me and, and just tell that story sometime. And it's been, what, 30, I think about 30 years ago now. Don't age uh, yourself. <laughs> well, that's not true. I still get choked up because like, I'm back on Yankee Stadium. I'm back on the mound, reliving that moment. My teammates are carrying out the mound. The crowd and like the New York fans have always been very supportive um, through all my ups and downs. And just hearing that crowd noise, I still hear that every time I tell the story. And like I said, I get goosebumps as well. Um, this is a tremendous night, and it's something I will always cherish. Um, one of one of the stories, and you and I have I, I asked you this question one time, um, and you were so so real about it. I asked you what you played for the Mets, you played for the Yankees. Obviously, you're representing the Mets tonight. Um, we we used to love to see you in that Yankee uniform. Yankee fans, I totally get it. I'm a man at heart. But I must admit, the Yankees have probably a better organization that I ever played for. That's no disrespect to the Mets or Houston or, or Cleveland, nobody. But playing with the Yankees and Mr. Steinbrenner at the time, just first class and the way they treated you and your family and everybody. And the thing about George was he was a fan also. He wanted to win. And he got a lot of heat. They said, oh, he's buying pennants. He's buying best players. But the other owners had the same opportunity to sign these free agents where they was pocketing the money. And George invested money back into the team. And just a true, true guy and just wanted to win at any cost. And I'll always respect that for the Yankees. And but I'm always gonna be a man at heart. That's number one. So so we lost Hank Steinbrenner recently. Yes. Um, and so we were all obviously, I was very saddened by that news. Um, got to meet them a couple of times. They were just also genuine and warm. Yes. Um, you shared a really awesome story with time with me about George Steinbrenner. Hmm. And you know he's my idol in baseball. Oh, yeah. Not only not not only because of what um, you know, not because I'm a I'm a Bronx girl, yeah. but because what he did for the game of baseball. Yes. I, I feel like he just elevated the game to a whole nother level. Um, and you shared one time that you were getting on a plane. I believe it was going down to Tampa, and George got on. Do you mind sharing a little piece of that? Is that the one we went to see my dad? I'll tell you, sir, sweetie, or is that the one the, where from the Yankee? The one where he was getting, uh, you you were on and George was getting on and a woman got onto the plane and he he um, stopped the woman. She was coming in with a stroller and he stopped the woman and he said, where are you seated? And she said, I'm seated in the back. Oh, in the first class, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes gotcha. Yeah, for what George a lot of times, being that he was from Tampa, I was from Tampa, and was flying home, and the type of guy George is, and I never imagined saying that, because a lot of times we should fly on his plane, but we were taking the commercial plane back, we both were in first class, and the lady was struggling with her bags, and Felicia told me, Doc, get up here with the bags, so I helped her get the bags, put them up, and asked the lady where you're sitting, and she might have said, like, 
row 15 or 16 or something. Say, no, not anymore. Take this seat. Come on, doc. We're going back here. And he gave the lady a seat and went in the back. And that's just the guy he was. I mean, he cared about that. He should always tell me, when you do stuff from the heart, you don't need any cameras around. And I've seen him, especially in Tampa, do so many things to help so many people. And he didn't want nobody to know about it. And that's just the type of guy he was. And if we have time, I'll tell you a quick story we do with my dad, too. Um, Ray McGrone, who's a friend of ours, um, my dad was sick. And this is before my dad you know, passed away. George was flying into Tampa for a meeting at Legendsville. And when he got in, he ran into Ray McGrone. And he said, how's Doc? How's his dad? He said, well, Doc's at the hospital now. His dad's not doing well. And George didn't even go into the meeting. He told Ray to go into the meeting, tell Brian Cash and those guys he'll be, he'll be back shortly. He came to the hospital where he was and spent probably two or three hours in the hospital room with me and my dad and my mom just doing it and just talking. I just the kind of guy he was. And then he went to the meeting. And those are the type of things you never forget. I've seen so many things he's done, so many wonderful things. And it's a shame that he's not in the Major League Hall of Fame. How I don't even know how you can have a Hall of Fame and not have George Steinberg in there. It's oh, unbelievable to that's me. That's awesome. Yes. So so you did something like that for our family. Um, you know, our brother, my Tony's brother, my brother-in-law, Michael, was going through cancer, through chemo. And um, you got on the phone to give him a word of encouragement in the middle of his chemo. And that's something that he always remembers. He says, awesome. I remember that day Dwight calling me. Well, he calls you Doc. I call you Dwight, but he calls you Doc. Well, that's fine. And that's Doc fine. called me and um, gave me a word of encouragement. That's something we hold very dear to our heart, um, Dwight, forever. Um, you know, our family, again, we we, we absolutely adore you and Thank always you. wish yes. you nothing but the best. Thank you. Um, so growing up, who was your favorite team? Cincinnati Reds was my team because I grew up in Tampa. The Reds had spring training in Tampa and – my dad was a huge baseball fan as well. He took me to all the games. And this one day that I'll never forget, and it's probably why I'm the way I am today with kids, because I met Pete Rose. He was, he was leaving the game early. It was a blowout game. We were leaving early. My dad said, let's go beat the traffic. And we ran to Pete. My dad goes, yes, Pete Rose. So I see Pete. But to me, baseball players are bigger than life. Um, so Pete kind of waved. He goes, hey, kid, where you going? The game's not over. And so I waved. And my dad said, it's OK, we'll get a, cat. I'll get a picture. And back then, I don't know if you remember the instant Polaroid cameras. Yeah. And before, just pull a picture right out. So my dad had that. I stood by Pete. We took the picture. And Pete said, hang in there, kid. Maybe I'll see you in the big leagues one day. And I was about 10 years old. And then you fast forward nine years later, I make the team. I'm 19 years old. We open a season in Cincinnati. And I'm there and I'm watching Pete Rose. And I'm taking batting practice. And he comes over. He don't know I'm the same kid. He congratulates me. Congratulations, kid, for making the team. Hopefully you have a lot of success. I read the stats in the Mount Elite, so I wish you all the best. And I was telling him the story about when I met him, we took the picture, which obviously he didn't remember. So later that summer, when the Reds came to um, New York to play, my dad came up and he gave me a picture, and I gave it to Pete to sign it. He signed it. And still today, I wish I had it with me, but I still have that picture. And Pete became my guy. And that's why what he did for me that day as a 10-year-old, I will always make sure you take time off with your kids because you never know the impact that you can have on a kid. And that's and why I and I can attest to that. I can attest that you are that type of guy because you did it with us. You did it with our kids. You, uh, j and I don't know if you know this, Dwight, but I think that it's good for you to know this. I reached, I had reached out to so many players to ask them to come to our facility. Yeah. And many of them would make promises and they never did. Yeah. You were the only one and the first one yeah. to ever walk into our facility and spend time with our kids and yeah. I mean, those are moments for these youngsters that they're never, ever, ever going to forget. Yeah, um, and so, and so, I can attest to that—that that yeah. you are that type of, you are that type yeah. of man, um, and that type of player. And um, I want everybody to know that. I want yeah. people to know that that's who you are at heart. Um, yeah. And so now, I'm going to share with you. Okay. This fan sent something, as I mentioned. They have a facility in Houston, Texas. Okay. And when he found out that I had done the promo saying that you and I were going to be on, he yes. sent this and wanted you to see it. And okay. I thought that it would be so appropriate to share it with you. So yes. let me start with this one. Okay. And this was something that he drew in wow. high school. That's pretty cool. Wow. Um, and when I looked at very this, cool. I said, man, this is so awesome. It is awesome. I love seeing things I've never seen before. That's very unique. I like that a lot. So, and then, and then I'm going to show you this one. 
Look at how cool yeah. this one is. It is nice. Wow. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. I remember that, taking that picture in um, spring training. It was originally a Nike poster, and they had the smoke coming out of my hand that turns into K's. Very special. I like that. But I'm glad he took the time to share that with me and, and you as well. Very nice. So, so I was thinking, and I don't know if this is possible for you, but I was thinking of having him send it over. Sure. And maybe you'd be so kind and sign it for him. Oh, it'd be my pleasure. It'd be my pleasure. Have him send it to you, and then you know how to contact me. I would definitely take care of it. I mean, that's Absolutely. great stuff right there. And, and then that's what it's all about, um, giving back to the fans, because when you're a player, your time is limited. Well, obviously, now that I'm retired, I got nothing but time. And this was about sharing those moments with the fans and showing them your appreciation of all the support that they've given me throughout the years. Absolutely. That, that is truly what this is all about, is about, about you know, us caring about one another yes. and um, recognizing that even in our shortcomings, um, you know, we're, we're all valuable. Yes. Um, and we all we all have something that we can, um, you know, offer to others. And so, brother, thank you so much for your time tonight. It's been it's been such an honor to have you on with me. Um, I'm sure that, um, you know, you have fans that are watching right now. So I don't know if you want to just give a quick shout out to your fans. Let them know um, how much you appreciate them. I know you do. Oh, um and I look forward to definitely us connecting again. Um, yes. You know, I know that sometimes you're down in Tampa. Right now we're up north. Um, yes. But uh, I look forward to seeing you and perhaps, you know, catching up again sometime soon. You stay safe, stay oh, healthy. Thank you. And know that the Melendez family loves you very, very, very much. And we're always praying for you. Thank you. I love you guys, too. And honestly, I love my fans. And thank you to all my fans for all the support. For staying with me through ups and downs. And you guys always gave me the extra strength that I've needed when I, when I needed that extra, you know, hand. You guys always there, not just about on the field, but when I was off the field as well. And just, you guys keep doing a good job. And we talk about that academy. You guys gave those kids a place to go after school with all the strikes and where they can try to live out their dream. So I was just happy to take part for one day. And you guys were there every single day helping those kids. And I'm sure they'll never forget that. So thank you guys. And thanks for having me tonight. Absolutely. All right. Much love. All right, we'll love you too. Soon. All yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So there you have it. That was Dwight Gooden with us tonight. Um, you know, just has always been such a special, sweet man. Um, and for that, we're, we're always grateful. Um, I also just wanted to mention, um, we've gotten a lot of calls and questions about our homeschool program, um, the Baseball Training Institute. Um, for those that are wanting more info on it, please feel free to visit the website. It is thebhi.com. That's the uh, T-H-E slash B-H-I.com. We'd love to answer any questions you may have about that program. and. Again, I just want to thank our special guest tonight, Josh Wintz, and the one and only Dwight Gooden. Um, it was fun catching up with our friend Dwight. And so we wish everyone good luck and a very good night, a safe and healthy, healthy, healthy night to everyone as we try to get over the craziness um, that is, you know, taking over our world. So I look forward to seeing everyone again next week. Have a good one.